first and foremost, let me start by saying this. If you are 20 to 30 and you are not getting to it in this day and age, you just not get into it. And I'm seeing people literally making four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a couple hours in an empty space. I'm like, yo, yeah. I need some of this. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm working like my tail off trying to make this kind of money as a server. Right. Like, when I get to shake the hands of families that I get to really touch and they look at me, they're just like, yo, because of you, you know, I made $25,000 a month with my event space and I could send my daughter to a better school. Wow. One of my guys, Alex Carmozzi, said he's like, I'm not investing in the S&P 500, I'm investing in the S&E 500 X, yeah. because any dollar that I put into myself, I'm going to get back 10X, 100X, 1,000X. Yeah. I spent over $220,000 on my personal development last year. It made me 1.3 mil yeah. off one business. Right. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I want to help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. Alright, alright, let's go back to the video. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Listen, a nine to five job can make you feel secure in life if you don't have big dreams. But for someone who wants to retire early while financially securing his family's future, a nine to five job may not be the solution. What Jay said, nine to five is how you survive, but I ain't trying to survive. I'm trying to live it to the limit and love it alive. That's where my guy Billionaire B comes in. He can help an accomplished entrepreneur and business coach. He is now helping people find financial independence through passive income streams. After creating a business empire in rented event space, real estate, Airbnb and e-commerce. Brian is guiding others as a mentor to follow his footsteps. When I tell you this 27, listen, 27 multi-millionaire from New York City with big New York energy is going to give you the whole game, nothing but the game, to help you grind. My God, Billionaire B is back in the building. Yeah, I already know what it is, man. Let's, Yo, get, it, let's get it. Let me tell you, right, so so for those who didn't see uh, the episode, we had, you know, you, Ramel, Boone, all 20-something-year-old oh multimillionaires. Um, I made a, a promise on that interview. I said, listen, man, I really want to do what I could do to amplify your voices. Um, you know, I... You know, and I and you know, Boone has it has his own episode. I was like, nah, I gotta bring my guy Billionaire B back because um, you inspired me. I told you this behind behind the scenes. Like when I was 27, I was doing well, but I was doing well from a corporate perspective, right? Making six figures, a branch manager. Um, but you 27 uh, made millions of dollars. Uh, people call you their mentor. Like I've literally somebody from my community was telling me how much you changed their life with the rental space and things of that nature. So I want to dig into all of that. But before we start, for those who don't know, who is Billionaire B? Yo, what's good, what's good, what's good, y'all? My name is Brian Waldron, a.k.a. Billionaire B. Uh, I'm a seven-figure event space owner, been in the game for about four years now, and just blessed and highly favored to pour into your community right now, man. We we changing lives daily. Yeah. So 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 talk to me about um, where you started, right? Because um, I believe that today, as, as people hear the sounds of our voice, this is the easiest time to make money ever in the history of making money. Like, there's never been a better time to make money. Um, and when I say 27-year-old multimillionaire, I don't know what people hear, but you've been in the game for four years, and you have a regular story. Tell me that story. Yo, so first and foremost, let me start by saying this. If you are 20 to 30 
and you are not getting to it in this day and age, you just not get into it. Mm. Period, point blank, period. It has yeah. never been easier yeah. to make a dollar legally yeah. nowadays, y'all. Yeah. I literally, I had a 2.8 GPA in college. I went mm. to college, right. had a 2.8 GPA because I come from a foreign background, right? Yeah. So like they big on education, right? Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Got fired from my first job because I couldn't get a corporate America job out yep. of school. It was too competitive. I'm from New York. Yeah. Everybody and their mom trying to get an accounting and finance degree, whatever the case may be. Got fired from my first job as a server. Got fired from my second job as a server. Got fired from my third job. And at this point, I'm just like, yo, the universe got to be trying to tell me something. Like, yeah, yeah. It's you unemployable. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not employable. Right, you know right, what right. I'm saying? And yeah. I felt like, yo, I, I got to make it happen. So I started working uh, at a local event space because I had extra time during my off shifts as a server. And I'm seeing people literally making four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a couple hours in an empty space. I'm like, yo, yeah. I need some of this. I'm, yeah. I'm. I'm working like my tail off trying to make this kind of money as a server. Right. So I stacked up all my bread for a year and I finally got my first event space in Bedford Stuyvesant, mm, New York. Wow. Best Stuy. Anybody who is from New York, Brooklyn, you know Best Stuy, Best right? Best Stuy, do or die. Best Stuy, do or die. You yeah. feel me? Respectfully. So I got my first space. I make my first couple, I ain't make no money my first couple months because I didn't. There, there was nobody teaching this. There's yeah. nobody sharing this type of information. And you know how it is in New York, bro. Right. You reach out to somebody and you're just like, yo, can you give me the play? How, how do I get into this? Everybody gatekeeping. Right, 100%. Nobody yeah, want to share yeah, information, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah. Nobody. Everybody think that like you're trying to catch one up on them, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So I eventually had to figure it out. I had my first $15,000 a month about three months in. Mm. And then I was just like, all right, cool. Once I, I just needed to see it once. Yeah. I just need because you know how it is as entrepreneurs. You see one thing and you just kind of Facts. keep angling, right? Yeah. And then I started going up with the rentals. Mm. I started getting more spaces until eventually I had my first hundred thousand dollar month. Mm. I had my first hundred thousand dollar month two years ago, and then now we we up three 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 and a half million dollars later. Wow! Just off renting space. Wow! And break that down to me, right? Because um, you say out of all the real estate that event space the best. So you saying wholesaling. Fix and flip, storage, um, out of state real estate, uh, buying holes. Like you, look, you said put it up. You said, yo, let's put the numbers up. Put the numbers up for real. So think about it like this, right? You can go and get a commercial space on a website like Crexy, yep. Craigslist, or loopnet.com, right? Mm -hmm. Do a very, very minimum viable product. So you can. Can I get spicy? Get spicy, baby. Let's so go. I could, my first credit card was a Chase Inc. Unlimited credit card. I had a $15,000 limit, right? Mm -hmm. I asked them to bump it up. I had a $25,000 limit, right? Liquidated a $25,000 credit card. If you, There's tons of different ways to liquidate a credit card. Visa, yep. debit, gift cards, money gram, all those different things, right? I took the money off. I handed the landlord a portion for the moving cost. That's one month rent, one month security. And then I did a minimum viable product. So you're doing the bare minimum. Floors, walls, lighting, that's it. Mm. Took, went to Fiverr, got a floor plan of the space, went on Canva, built a brochure of the space so people could see how it would actually look. Mm. And then instantly from that point on, people were like, all right, cool, like this could work, whatever. I'm pre-selling the space, putting it on Peer Space, putting it on Splacer, put it on Gigster, list out the space for upwards of $1,000 a night, $800 to $1,000 a night. People are booking it. I take that money that they're booking it from, come back and finish the space. Mm. So now I'm literally building out a space using other people's money. Mm. Res like, Easily. None of it. None of it is yours. None of it is mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I feel like more people need to understand this is how the wealthy build wealth. Right. What they I'm use saying. other people's money. If you're constantly cash trapping, you're never going to get to the next level. Right. You feel what I'm saying? For you to change your situation, you've got to change your situation. Right. So, yo, I was literally having this conversation with my team the other day, right? Um, put them on blast. And it's like literally, like, talk about that concept, right? Because I, I want to talk about that concept of liquidating credit cards, yeah. right? Like somebody who has, because um, obviously you have to have a good credit score, right? So right. let's say somebody, let me just pull a number out. Let's say somebody has a 720 credit score, like a really good credit, credit score. score yeah. um, and and they, um, like what could they do with that? Absolutely. So yeah. I would, for, so first and foremost, I would say the credit score is simply a reflection of the credit profile, right? So you want to have a strong credit profile, right? Yeah. You want to have like, you know, good new inquiries. So you want to have less than about four to six inquiries within the past two years, mm -hmm. right? You want to have good average age. You want to have average age of your credit history, probably a little bit more than four years, mm -hmm. right? You want to have a good credit mix. So that's like auto loans, home loans, bills, things of that nature, right? You want to have low utilization. Everybody says to have utilization below 30%. Ideally, you want to have it below 10%, right? And then you want to have no late payments. That's mm -hmm. crucial. 
you do yeah. not like work out whatever payment plan you have with your process or whatever, you don't want to have late payments because then obviously you're more risk, right? Yeah. So once you have a solid, and there's tons of different ways to build out a credit profile, right? If you have uh, a really high utilization, obviously pay them, yeah. right? Or you can use a website like kickoff.com. Kickoff.com will actually add a $750 util, uh, line of credit onto your credit profile that's only used for their products, but there's only two ways to, in, to decrease utilization, right? Decrease your, increase your limit or decrease your spending. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. So kickoff will actually decrease your limit for you, right? With inquiries, easy. You can go on Experian right now, dispute off inquiries, they'll get them off. TransUnion Equifax is a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, with credit mix, you can go to Navy Federal, get a pledge loan. And this is just a play that everybody can do, right? Mm -hmm. So you can go and get a pledge loan. Pledge loan, the way a pledge loan works is that you put up collateral, mm -hmm. right? So say, for example, you have a car, car's worth $25,000, you get a pledge loan of $25,000, right? Mm -hmm. So then what you'll go ahead and do is you'll pay off 95%. You'll get the money, pay off 95%. Mm -hmm. So now you have a loan on your credit profile reflected at 95%. Mm. That's huge. Mm huge mm -hmm. right yeah so these are all things that people can build up but what i like to do when i'm getting credit cards you do essentially a round of funding right mm -hmm. so there's three credit bureaus right experian equifax transunion right what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a credit card from each bureau so for example chase pulls from experian right you can get a barclays aviator they pull from transunion mm. um did I, so yeah you so chase experian sauce, <laughs> chase experian barclays aviator transunion and you can get a city premiere that's equifax mm -hmm. right each inquiry does not impact the next because they're mm. all three separate bureaus, right? right? It's kind of like asking your mom for ice cream and then not telling your mom that you go ask for your dad, right? right? right. So they, they, they don't interact with each other, right. right? So then you can literally have all three tabs open up on your computer, bop, 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 submit, mm. and then you're getting three credit cards mm. for one inquiry. Mm. So say, for example, right, you get $10,000 each, that's $30,000, yeah. right? Again, based on your credit profile, right? Your strength, whatever the case may be. And you want to liquidate it. Now, yeah. liquidating, like, it's... It's very, very easy, especially nowadays, to liquidate a credit card. Yeah. They have websites like plastique.com, mm -hmm. right? P-L-A-S-T-I-Q.com. That's one of the easiest ways. Another thing is you can use a merchant processor like Stripe, mm -hmm. QuickBooks, or Square, where you can send somebody like yourself an invoice. Like, say, for example, I have a $25,000 credit card. Mm -hmm. I come to you, Ash, yo, I got to get this money off. Mm -hmm. All right, B, I'm going to send you a $25,000 invoice. Mm -hmm. The money's going to drop in your account in two days, mm -hmm. minus 2.9%, and you'll just wire it back mm -hmm. to me. That's the quickest way to do it. <laughs> yeah. That's the quickest way to do it right another way is that you can do a balance transfer but you have to have a bank account with that same credit card mm -hmm. right so if you have a chase in credit card and then you have a chase bank account you can do a balance transfer but balance transfer fees are very expensive yeah. right another way you can do it you can go to western union get uh money orders things like that you paid a dollar or if you had a lot of time you could there's so many different ways yeah, you yeah, can yeah, do yeah. it that's yeah. why when people tell me like ah how can i liquidate a credit card i'm just like pick one right 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 there's, right, <laughs> there's right. tons of different right. ways you can do it it's like the least of your worries right. right but one thing i would say about the strike process though you want to make sure it's a seasoned account you don't want to risk don't do this with paypal right oh, yeah. don't PayPal do this with paypal facts. paypal will lock your money you up lock right? it up you, you'll like, never you see it never again see it. kiss it goodbye facts, facts. so you would liquidate that money then when the money's in your account like I mentioned, you're going to go to landlord, moving costs, one month rent, one month security. Sometimes they ask for two months security. Security deposit, you get that back. So it's yeah. not even a big deal. And then with your contractors, for your repairs and things like that, again, you already have the money in the account sitting there. Right. You pay them out. You get the ball rolling. Right. It's that simple. And I always recommend people when they get into this event space game to lease. Yeah. Don't buy. Mm. Because the thing about it is that when you buy, you're going to have to put 20%, 25% down, right. right? When you're leasing, like I said, you're only putting one month rent, one month security. So if your rent is $3,000, you're only paying $6,000 to get the spot. Facts. Imagine you paying $6,000 to get a spot once. Right. You put another $5,000 to get your furniture, whatever. Now you all in $10,000, right? right? Now you go and get, you build it out, say that's another $10,000, that's $20,000, right? These are realistic numbers. Facts. I have done this myself, yeah. right? In New York. And you know how right. expensive New Absolutely. York is. Absolutely. People, bro, people be finding me on YouTube and they be like, yo, he did this in New, in New York. York yo. If you could make it in New York, what? You could make it anywhere, anywhere bro. Yeah. Anywhere. Yo, it's so crazy because I was same thing, right? I'm looking for a, an event space to shoot content. And when I start seeing the prices for the I was I say, yo, you know, I'm fucking why. So I'm I'm thinking I'm about to drop five thousand a month, six thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, three. I said, what? Yeah, they head crap. Are you no, it's fine. Hey, <laughs> bro, and the beautiful, the, and you talked about like how event space is the best asset class, bro. Yeah. Would you believe me if I told you I made seventy five thousand dollars in three weeks this month? I haven't seen my spaces in three months. Wow. I like I don't go there. Wow. I don't. I travel too much. Wow. I was in Dubai a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I'm gonna be in Italy in a couple months. Yeah. Like I, 
I travel way too much. Yeah. I, I don't I don't go to my event space at all. And they still cash flow. I literally, bro, I could be on my phone right now. I'll randomly, I post it on my stories every single day. Yeah. Cash app, Zell, cash yeah. app, Zell, cash yeah. app, Zell. Sitting here talking to you, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollars. And 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 how do you like it like how does that happen though, right? Because obviously you had to build up to that. Um but they, but you obviously have like a system, like you've been yeah. able to automate that. Yeah. Talk about talk about some of that system um, that you have because I want to break away. Like anybody who's watching this, um, I want to break any excuse they ever will ever have for why they're not living the life they're supposed to be living, right? Because I, I truly believe, like we said earlier, this is, is the best time to make money. Uh, but then this is also, I believe, an obligation, right, on people because I feel like. When good people make money, they could do more good in the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I mean, I mean, you you talked a little bit earlier, again, behind the scenes about a conversation you had and and and, and you know why you want to pour in um, two people. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So I love live events, right? Yeah. I just had a networking event in New York. Shout out everybody who came out. Like 200 people came out, yeah. right? And we promoted for like a week. Yeah. 200 people came out, and it was absolutely amazing because I just love to see. Like, it's one thing to be on a on a on a on a you know on a class or a Zoom or whatever the case may be, and like you see everybody ah dro drop it in the chat, right, like, you know right. what I'm saying? But when I get to shake the hands of families that I get to really touch, and they yeah. look at me, and they're just like, yo, because of you, you know, I made twenty five thousand dollars a month with my event space, and I could send my daughter to a better school. Wow. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, you know, because, you know, I made $50,000 a month. I was able, I got a student, right? Named Rich. Family man, hardworking man, you know, was working at his job. Regular, re regular guy, right? He tapped in with me. Uh, he got into the mentorship program. Took a little convincing, but you know what I'm saying? If, it, if you're not selling them, you're hurting them, right? Mm -hmm. So he got into the program and everything like that. I taught him about automations with VAs, systems, the programs that we use, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Every other month, this man travels to another country. Now. Wow. He just wow. came back from Colombia, mm. Antigua, wow. a cruise, yeah. with his whole entire family. Wow. How many men can say that they can do mm. that? You know, 99% yeah. of America cannot do that. Right. Yeah. And he, the way he thinks now, it's so interesting the way you think about money when you are receiving it. Mm. Because typically we're taught to think of things as, all right, cool, I want to buy this new PlayStation. I need to work for two hours. Right. I'm sorry, I need to work for two weeks. I need to, this is two pay cycles, whatever the case may be. When you're in entrepreneurship, Shh. yo, I want to go on a $20,000 trip to Turks and Caicos. All right, that's four or five packages. Yo, that's crazy. You say that. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Yeah, facts. But you have to build those opportunities and you have to invest in yourself. Like one of my guys, Alex Harmozzi, said, he's like, I'm not investing in the S&P 500. I'm investing in the S&E 500 facts, yeah. because any dollar that I put into myself, I'm going to get back 10X, 100X, 1,000X. Yeah. I spent over two hundred twenty thousand dollars on my personal development last year. It made me one point three mil. Yeah, off one business. Right. So, like, you is the, is the feds watching? I don't <laughs> what money? <laughs> what money? You feel me? So I, it's when, when you do these live events, you get to really see the impact that you get to do, and that's yeah. one of my goals. I want to do. I'm will be doing a networking event every single month. No, I actually have it. one in Atlanta this week. Yeah. Um. Just you. You just touching people is just yeah. literally. And and so and so now let let let's shift a little bit to uh, our fellas out here. Or I mean, yeah, let, let, let's 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 you know shift to the fellas uh, because you believe that you know as you are making all this money, uh, you should be or or before you even making money, you should be in the clubs popping bottles. You believe that? Nah. Nah, what's your, what's, your, what's your take? You, no. say, you, say, you say you gotta reach a certain amount of money to even, like, you shouldn't even be focusing on girls. You gotta be on a certain tax bracket before you start trying to break backs, respectfully. Ooh. Respectfully. Like, you gotta start, you gotta, you gotta level up because I feel like a lot of dudes. Wait, hold on. You said, t yo, step your tax bracket up, <laughs> B. Before you start breaking backs, step your tax bracket up. Hold, talk to us. You're talking spicy. <laughs> They're going to they they come at you, man. Hey, I'm ready for the smoke, yes, man. Because well, I feel like I, I truly believe in what I'm saying because yeah. this is something that I've done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, from the time I was about, I got a, I got my first space to the time where, like, you know, we, we made $3 million or whatever case me. I was locked in. Mm. Locked in. I wasn't really fraternizing too much. I wasn't going out too much because I was building a business. Yeah. And I feel like so many people, men or women, have it backwards because they feel like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get some cheeks. I'm trying to be out here. I'm trying to be in these streets, popping bottle, cost amigos. And I'm just like, for what? What are you celebrating? What are you cel like? What are you celebrating? You have a 600 credit score and $300 to your name. What are you celebrating, my boy? And then the craziest thing about it is that a lot of these dudes they be on dates trying to like court women, things like that, and you ask them to split the, split the bill, brokey, brokey. 
what are you talking about right now, bro? Respectfully, I can't. Yeah. I can't see it because it, like it's it's lock in, lock in for six months. Yeah, lock in for six months. Put put all the women aside. Put all the games aside. Just lock in on your business. Find one skill and just hone it. And then you can start thinking about it. Once you get your tax bracket up, you can start thinking about breaking backs. But yeah. until then, you need to get yourself situated. Yeah. You need to get yourself right. How are you supposed to be taking care of a woman, taking care of a family? You ain't even got no money to your name. Facts. You don't even know how credit works. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Not, and I think that's important, right? Because, I, because, again, I think that, you know, what you focus on is what you get. What right? you measure grows. And so if, if you're focusing on... Um, you know, relationships and trying to, um, you know, be whole, like using somebody else to be whole, then you'll never have control, f- full financial freedom, right? Um, but if you're like, you know what, let me focus on myself. Let me become a whole person, both, like you said, man and woman, let me become a whole person, which also um, is based on what you could provide for yourself, because once, you, once you're able to provide for yourself, then when you come into a relationship, now there becomes this interdependence where y'all not, y'all not dependent on each other, but y'all could become more powerful and nobody is, um, you, know, you, know, you know, leaning on anybody else. It's like not, not, not this, this crutch, right? Um, and so let, let, let's talk too, right? Because um, what's your thoughts on now this introduction of AI, right? Because I feel like, um, you know, with, with, with artificial intelligence, like how has that made life easier for the entrepreneur? Yeah, absolutely. So technology, the, the sole purpose of technology is to do what? Make our lives easier, faster, better, stronger, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah. Like that's why new technology is developed. So when artificial intelligence comes into play, yes, there is the risk of obviously, all right, cool. This could come and like you said, <laughs> the movie Demolition yeah, Day yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. could come in and completely wipe out the world. Are we there yet? I don't think so. Is it impossible? Who knows? Right. But the thing about it for right now and for the near future, it is here to make our lives easier. So, for example, ChatGPT, the first AI, literally grew to like 5 million users in a week Facts. or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And because why? It made AI accessible, one, for free, and two, easily because it came in the form of text. Yep. So now I can literally be in my, like literally last night I, was, I, just, I landed in my hotel room and I'm just like, What's a great piece of content I can post that's gonna get me a hundred thousand views tomorrow? And it's given it to wow. me. It's like, well, if you want to talk about business money, if you want to talk about event space, you should think about it like this. You should create a story that's. Been, I'm just like, mm, interesting. Right, right, right. But it and, and uh, it really boils down to the type of prompts that like. Right. The that's prompts important. that you yep. put in. Yeah. So it teaches you. You have to ask the right questions, the right questions to get the yeah. right results. Yeah. So, and then that's only one. Then you have like uh, Notion and Superhuman, mm-hmm. Superhuman. These are, these are AIs. Yeah. And these have been around for a while. Yeah. Asana, that's an AI. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? These are all different websites that just make the entrepreneur's life a lot easier. Like you said, you, you wrote a book in like five hours. Five hours. Crazy. Imagine a hundred years ago, how long it would have taken. Facts. Yeah. 10 years ago, how long it would have yeah. taken to do a book. So yeah. I think those who embrace change, and this is with everything, yeah. those who embrace change welcome change and will be changed. Yeah. What's the those point? who are resistant to it, yeah. those who are hesitant to change, they're going to die out. So, so let me ask you, though. So, so like, how do you change somebody's mindset, right? Somebody who, um, you know, is indoctrinated by the quote-unquote real world, right? Because, like... There's people who, um, you know, I stopped. I used to try to convince people. I'm like, yo, I'm from the projects. Like, I, you know, I, I didn't have no money growing up. I live a great life. I could do whatever. I'm talking about, like, no restriction. I could do whatever I want at any moment that I want it. And I'm trying to use me as an example. But people fight for their limitations. Like, people try to find reasons why they can't live fully in abundance how do you change that person's mindset? And, and, and this is why I love having this conversation with you because I'm like, man, this is a young guy, 27 years old, from New York City who like, who's, could do anything he wants at any moment. But what is that first step to like, shifting that, mind, like, that mindset? Exposure. Mm. Exposure and environment. Mm. A lot of people, they don't see it, so they can't seize it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. If, if all I know every single day is gun busting and, and women and, and popping bottles and things like that, that's all I know and that's all I have to live for. Yeah. But if I see young... Other, that's why I love watching... Like, dude, I literally took the 
music app out my phone and just put the podcast out. Wow. Because I learned that being exposed to so many other people doing so many different things, so many remarkable things at young age, old age, whatever, it really shows you what's possible. Yeah. And a lot of this information is free. I can go and listen to Ash Cash podcast right now on my phone for free. 100%. So there's no excuse, which is why I said from the very beginning, if you're 20 to 30 and you're, you're not making money, it's because you just don't want it. Right. You focus on the wrong things, bucko. Right. So the number one thing is environment. And if you don't have the money to go to a mastermind, to tap in with who, whatever you see got going on, things like that, you can go online, you can go on YouTube, it, unfollow. Can I, can, I, yeah, can go, I go in for a second? Go in, go in, brother. If you're 22, 30 and you're a man, unfollow all the baddies. Mm. Unfollow all the baddies right now. Mm. Like this is, I'm, just hear me out. I know you don't know me. My name is Brian Waldron. This is something I've done. I'm telling you. Unfollow all the baddies. Unfollow everybody on social media who is not pouring into you, who is not helping you grow, helping you learn, helping you earn. Only follow entrepreneurs, finance pages, things like that. When you learn, you earn. Mm -hmm. You want to cultivate your mindset. And as you get older, it gets a lot harder. So I'm telling you, all my brothers, all my sisters, start now. Your future self will thank you. I will thank you for you now. Mm. But start now. That's part of the reason I started my YouTube channel, because I want to leave it as literally not even a legacy, because I, I honestly I think legacy is a little bit overrated. Mm. But I want to leave it as almost like a blueprint for the future generations. Like, all right, cool. Look, listen, this is somebody who's scaled their business to $100 million. Yep. This is everything that I've done. These are all the books that I've read. These are all the systems. These are all the masterminds I've joined. Yep. Follow the blueprint yep. and make it better. Yeah. Because it's like people like you and EYL, you guys walk so we can run. 100%. I want to do the same thing. I want to run so other people can fly. 100%. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And but starts why encapsulating that information and documenting the process yeah. so that other people can go and just heed the blueprint. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, every, like if you're in this time period right now, it's, it's, it's only going to get harder. Mm -hmm. So take this time now to really just nurture your mindset and, and protect your well being, mm -hmm. protect your soul, protect your mata. Yeah, like 100%. for real, because the thing about it is like what you put into your head yeah. is going to impact you, whether you realize it or not. Like, I don't like, I love like, all my, my rappers and my artists and things like that. But the fact of the matter is I spend more time listening to podcasts and YouTube videos of these entrepreneurs that are doing amazing things because that's what I want to surround myself with. So when yeah. you tell me, Brian, how do I, you know, get people to realize that there's more to war the life and things like that. They just got to see it. Yeah. They just got to see other people like them doing it. When yeah. I saw, once I've seen another black man, Spanish man, minority, whatever the case may be, living a certain lifestyle, I'm yeah. just like, young? Right, facts. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. bro, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's possible. And that's what all people need to see. People yeah. just need to see that it's possible. Yeah. And, and, and what, you know, um, how important is execution though, right? Because there has to be a balance between knowledge and like learning as much and being in these rooms and execution because execution is is that thing that gets you to that next level like how like how important is execution and how do you balance the information with with with, with execution so there's a quote that i like that says there you have a season of information and you have a season of execution however i would like to just tweak that because the season of execution is all year round mm. You have to be in a constant, perpetual state of execution. Yeah. You can't learn and then execute. You mm. need to constantly be iterating. I'm reading a book right now called Ready, Fire, Aim by Michael Masterson. And he talks about for those who want to get to you know, the 1 million mark, the 10 million mark, whatever the case may be, they need to be in a constant state of iteration. Yeah. You need to be constantly creating, yeah. constantly recovering data. Yeah. I don't know if something's going to work unless I try. Facts. That's it. Yeah. I don't know what the paint color is going to dry like until it dries. Right. I got to paint the wall. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So... Execution is the only thing that matters yeah. because you can, I know a lot of people, smart people yeah. who just, they're just sitting on this information. They can regurgitate all this stuff. Oh yeah. I watch this. I read that. I did this. I do that. And they, all right, what do you have to show for it? Yeah. You know, mind you, there's going to be somebody else who's, they're going to get one gem and they're going to run it to the ground Yeah. because that's just how they're built. So if you really want to take your life by the horns and, and run it up, you, you got to start putting things into place. Give yourself a habit. I, there's another book that I recommend called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Oh, that's powerful. And, yeah. and he talks about never miss twice. Right. Right. If you didn't do something today, you can't miss twice. You can't let it elapse tomorrow mm -hmm. either. Because the thing about it is then you started to build momentum. You go down a downward spiral. Yep. I just created a YouTube video on this. So it's extremely important to just build the habit of just putting things into place. Yeah. Just executing. And if you don't, if you find yourself that you're not an executor, Get around executors. Right, facts. Yeah, yeah. Environment. Yeah. Just get around executors. Yeah, yeah. And so so now that you, 
you know, you have this automated business that, you know, you're, you know, that you're making great money from, uh, what are some other business ventures that you, that you've been able to take advantage of? Absolutely. Yeah. So while I have, uh, gotten into a couple other things like, you know, real estate, Airbnb, e-commerce, things of that nature, what I've learned, and this is going to sound a bit contrarian because everybody talks about millionaires got seven streams of income, right? Yeah. Focus on one. Mm. Focus yeah. on one. If I, if I could honestly do it all over again, like go back to 2021, I would just focus on one thing mm. and just scale it to the moon. If mm. I don't want to do it anymore, sell it, start something different. Mm. Because you can chase two rabbits. You're going to catch neither one fast. Wow. I read another book called The One Thing and by Gary Keller. Gary. There you go, Gary Keller. And it, it changed my mindset and it made me realize that I was literally the brokest and the lowest in my entrepreneur career mm. when I had the most streams of income. Can you believe that? Wow. So you were the brokest and lowest. I was the brokest and you lowest had multiple streams. when I had the most streams of income. Wow. And I remember sitting in my apartment and being like, yo, B, you have all these businesses. Why are you broke? Wow. And it's because my mindset had broke. Mm. I was spending all this mental energy, all this mental capacity trying to take care of all these different things, put out all these different fires yeah. that none of them, none, none of them could become a real flame. Mm. So wow. I learned I, when I changed the mindset to just going all in and I, and does, just because you have one business doesn't mean you have to have only one stream of income. Right. Like even with the coaching program, we have several offers, yeah. different mentorships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But it's important not to spread yourself too thin. Like yeah. I can't be having a clothing brand yeah. and having real estate and having Airbnbs and having my event space and have yeah. my coaching and have my, like, it's just, it's too much. Yeah. There are people who do it, yeah. but you have to be a real good team player. You have to be really, really good at team stacking. You have to be really, really good at setting up automations and SOPs, which I am. Yeah. But at this age where I'm trying to build my career, I don't want to do all that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to really focus on one thing. So I have real estate. I have Airbnbs. I have e-commerce. I've dialed down a lot of those so I can focus on helping more people through our online program. Yeah. And so, and, and, and so like, I mean, I mean, you have Airbnb. You can tell me you got. Right? He's like, it's so. I, I, no, no, no. Because, 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 I, I, you know, because I want, I want to uh, dive in a little bit. Right. Because I, I don't want people to miss this. Right. When we talked about real estate earlier, um, you know, Airbnb, obviously, um, if you, you buy or rent a place, rent arbitrage, you uh, let other people rent it out. Uh, and there's restrictions to, to some of that. Um, you know, um, as somebody who has, who's, who has Airbnbs and somebody ha ha who has event spaces, you say that event space is better than Airbnb. Way better. Yeah. Way Why? Better. Yeah. I mean, overall on a cash on cash return, right? If you, you put money into an air, I, most Airbnb owners, and obviously they have different levels. They have Lux Airbnbs, they have condos, they have houses, things like that. Most Airbnb owners, when they're getting into the business, they typically do one bedroom, two bedroom, maybe even a house. They're netting probably three to $5,000 a month, mm -hmm. right? Where, mind you, they're paying $3,000 for a mortgage or whatever the case may be. They might be netting, like I said, another three to $5,000. These are numbers that I've seen. These are numbers that they brag about, things yeah. like that. I don't know if you, when I look at it, I'm like, are you bragging or are you complaining? <laughs> but then we'll pay, like, for example, right? We have two, we have a one space. We spent, we pay seventy three thirty three a month in rent. Mm -hmm. That same exact space just did $75,000 in a month. Wow. So when I look at the differences, because I have Airbnbs and I have event spaces, I'm just like, they're literally the same business model. Right. This just one. This just produces a lot more money. Right. And the thing about it is that I have somebody in my establishment for one night. Mm. One night. Yeah. They're spending three, four, five racks. Right. One night. Right. But this person's in my apartment for my apartment for a week, and I got like two thousand mm. dollars. That doesn't sound right. Yeah. Yeah. Or like yeah. it just don't, it don't yeah. make no sense yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I dialed that down. And I'm just like, yo, I really just got to go big on my event space, which is why even now in 2023. My master plan mm. is to partner with all of, like a lot of my students. Mm. So, for example, right, we bought a building in Philadelphia. I have one of my students running it. Mm. I have another student who's doing about twenty five thousand dollars a month in Atlanta right now, and we're going to be partnering and buying a building. Mm. And my goal is to build a McDonald's model. Mm. I'll own the property, and all my students own the real estate. So, my goal with my program 
is to literally create the best entrepreneurs possible. So I give them everything. Wow. I want you to have all the banks. I mm. want you to have all the credit cards. Mm. I want you to get the approvals. I mm. want you to get the mentorships. I want you to get the bookings because my goal is for you to make so much money mm. that I can recognize you, give you your award because mm. we have 25K a month, 50K a month, and 100K a month award where you fly out to New York and I give it to you personally. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I want you to be so good at what you do mm. that I have to look at you and be like, yo, we need to make money together. Mm. I, I want to make money with you. Yeah. I have a student making $50,000 in Boston. I want to make money with you. Right. I don't want to do it. Right. <laughs> right. But I want to make money with you. Right. I don't want to run the business anymore, but I want to make money with you. Right. So my goal is to make our students so dangerous mm. and so good by empowering them with everything yeah. that they have no choice but to be successful and we can make money together. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Wow, wow, wow. And so, so, so what are the risks involved, though, with owning an event space, right? Because um, I, I could hear somebody right now listening, and, and, and when you said, I pay seventy three seventy three a month for this rent, they cringe because their, their rent is 500 their rent is 1000 their rent is two, yeah. 3000 right? Yeah. At, 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 the, at the maximum, there's somebody renting right now where they live for three thousand dollars. There's somebody who has a mortgage, right? They're paying three thousand dollars. So when they hear that they're renting for seventy three, seventy three, they there's this correlation between the two, and now they 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 just clinched up and they they they're afraid. So what what risks are involved with you know becoming you know doing event space? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, in, in the streets they call me the objection destroyer. Mm. You feel me? So I, I literally love just debunking all these things. The hardest things that you're gonna run into with your event space, and I actually talk about this in my in my classes, is finding it funding it, and filling it. Mm. Those are the three hardest things you're going to run into. When it comes to finding your event space, I already gave you all the websites, Crexy, LoopNet, and Craigslist. If you contact 10 to 20 realtors a week, go on three to five site visits a week, which is you're going to go and visit the space, and you use the list of questions that we have available to our community, you will find a space in 30 to 60 days. Mm. As long as you do that. That's yeah. the formula. That's yeah. all you have to do. 10 to 20 realtors a week, three to five site visits a week, you will find a space 30 to 60 days. Mm. Guaranteed. Tell it. Believe it. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah. All right? When it comes to funding it, I already gave all the bank plays. I already mm -hmm. gave all the credit cards, right? You get a Chase Inc. You can get American Express Blue Business Cash. You can get a Discover It Cash back. You can get a City Double Cash. For banks, you can go to Key Bank. You get a Truist. You get a loan $50,000 at Navy Federal. Easy. Mm. Off of LLC. Like, mm. it's so simple. And then all you need is like a 680. If you don't have a 680, go to a credit repair company. Like, it's, there's, there's right. no excuses, right. Right? right? When it comes to filling it, right? We believe heavily in organic traffic. I mm. just had 12 open house appointments yesterday. Mm. I wasn't even there. Wow. 12 open house appointments. So now we're using organic traffic like Instagram and TikTok. If you don't know how to do that, you can run Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to do that, you can put on PeerSpace. If you don't know how to do that, you can do Gigster. If you don't know how to do that, you can put on Splacer. If you don't know how to do that, you can do direct mail. Like, <laughs> There's tons of different ways to do it. If you don't know how to do that, you can list it on Craigslist. Like, there's so many different ways, but I feel like just so many people are just impatient. Yeah. And they don't believe in running a business and setting up a business that pays them like a business. Mm. They want to, they, they want to, they just want another job. Right. I never got into business to give myself another job. Mm. I wanted to build it so that I could retire my mom, which I did this year. Wow. Right. right? I, I literally, I had a conversation with my tax account. I was just like, how are you going to handle this? Am I going to have to 1099 my mom? Like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. But I, I wanted to, like, my event spaces did that for me. Yeah, you know, yeah. my I, I barely saw my mom until I was 12 years old because she was always working. Wow. My mom came into this country when she was 24 years old with $100 in her pocket. Wow. And she did phenomenal for herself. But growing up, I barely saw her yeah. because she was always working. And for the fact, and, and for the large amount of first generation Americans, this is the harsh reality. Yeah. I didn't want that for my kids and I didn't want that for my family. And I'm yeah. so glad and I'm so humbled and I'm so blessed that I can now in my mom's later years be able to retire her so she can relax. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't want that same future for myself. Mm -hmm. So now I have a business that can literally pay for an entire vacation for my family in wow. just a couple weeks. Yeah. And I yeah. want to empower other people to do the same exact thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. we have... When it comes, so those are the only objections you're going to run into. Finding your space, funding your space, filling your space. And that's the blueprint on how to get around all three. Wow. Wow. And like, ah, uh, because cause it, it sounds so easy, right? It does. And I know it's easy, right? Because I'm somebody who um, have taken what a normal person would think is, is risk, which is it's riskier to keep living the life that you're living. Woo! Say it again. It's riskier. To keep living the life that you're living. Like if you are living paycheck to paycheck, nine to five, 
a parent with kids or even if you don't have kids, your livelihood, you do not control your livelihood. Like your livelihood is in the hands of somebody else that at any moment, right? And, and, and when I say somebody else, I don't even mean, because when, when, when I say your livelihood is, is in jeopardy, a lot of people think, well, I, I work for a good company. I love my boss. That, that's not even the only, like you think about the economy, you think about like COVID, nobody could have, you know, all the people who love their jobs could not foresee that COVID was going to happen. And even with, 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 with them not foreseeing that it happened and it, it shook a lot of lives. Right. And so what are, you know, you know, what are some ways that, um, you are, uh, I, I would say safeguarding, right. But like, how do you, um, make sure that you are recession proof, if you will. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So recession proof is the name of the game. Yeah. Right. So one of the biggest things that we actually put in our models and we're actually working, we're currently developing a software right now to actually make this almost instantaneous. Mm. Cause I, I, like I said, my goal is to make it so dummy proof for people to come into this business and, and see the same success that we have and some of my other students have had. So one of the key things that we do is we make sure that we have other businesses renting our business in downtime. So mm. for example, right, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night is ideally the times that you'd book an event space, right? Yeah. But what about all the other times? What about Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning? What mm -hmm. about Monday through Thursday, right? So now we're getting churches in our venues. Mm. We're getting art galleries in our venues, fitness trainers, dance centers. I have a church paying me $1,800 a month. Mm. Now, keep that number at the top, right? right. 7300 7333 Yeah. That rent, right? Now that's subsidized by $1,800 a month for one church. Mm. I have another church that pays me $400 a week. Mm. I had a dance class that pays me $450 a week to use the space every Tuesday and Thursday. Mm. I'm still working on getting a fitness trainer at a dance center, but we, cause we have porcelain floors, so I don't really want to run that risk. Yeah, yeah. But if you have laminate floors yep. or LVT, you can do that. You yeah. can get a dance center. You can get uh, you, those, mir those movable mirrors. You can get a fitness trainer in mm -hmm. there. And now these are all people who are paying you every single week. Mm. So now your rent just got cut in half, just mm. got cut in thirds, mm. just got cut in fourth, mm. just by having other businesses who don't want to take on their own rent just using your space. Right. It's a clean space. It looks right. good, right? Right. right? They just want to use it on the off days. Right. So it's a win-win for everybody. So we're actually in our program. We're actually working on a process to automate this so that literally every single person who comes into the program, they, they have a whole bunch of vendors that just rent their space. They don't even have to worry about the rent. They don't even have to pay it themselves. Wow. 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 Yeah. I can't even think of no other excuses, man. Like, like, like I think, I think you literally uh, debunked every excuse um, anybody watching this? Now there is one more excuse. All right, talk to me. There is one more excuse, yeah. right? There is one more excuse. The excuse that you think that you're not enough. Because mm. that's the only thing that really gets into some people's way. They think wow. that I, I'm just not going to make it. Like, I'm somebody different. You're somebody different. Yeah. God made us any different than anybody else. Wow. We're all born the same. Wow. We're all, no, God never looked at anybody and been like, oh, this is an average baby. This is an average right. baby. We're all extraordinary. Facts. We all have skills. You have skills that I don't have. I have skills that you don't have. Facts. We're all skilled. Yeah. But you, ha which is why I like to spend a little portion on mindset because at a certain time you have to understand. You have to believe that you're enough. Yeah. Somebody like all my students who are making, who have great success in our program. It's not that they would have never achieved success. I just help them get there faster. Yeah. It's not that they would have never made that kind of money. I just help them get there faster. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So regardless whether you. I, I, I'm so behind investing in mentorship simply because it has helped me achieve new heights in a record speed. Yeah. You find somebody who's doing something amazing and you, they help you do something amazing yeah. as well. So at the end of the day, we can give you all the hacks. We can give you all the banks, all the credit cards, all the plays, all the websites, whatever the case may be. But if you don't think that you're enough, mm. it's not, none of the thing, nothing is going to happen. Mm. Nothing is going to happen. Yeah. You, you have to, at a certain point, just pull the trigger and be like, yo, I'm going to do it. Yo. I'm tired of being, I'm tired of being tired. Yeah. I'm tired of being regular i'm tired of being average i don't want to go back to work on monday yeah I, and, and and i see this and i see people every single day that they're, they're they're tired and they're worn out but they haven't made a decision to change in the mm. past four five six years yeah. when is tired become tired when does enough become enough mm. i got sick i i got that choice got taken from me because i got fired from my job yeah i didn't have the choice of being tired right. i got fired right right you know what i'm saying right so when I look at my mom, I, I'm like, yo, my mom is tired. She yeah. don't need to do this no more. Mom, yeah. you're not going back to work on Monday. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. What? What you mean is that it's done? Like, we're done. Yeah. I got a wire scheduled to send you out every mm. single month. Yeah. Wow. Automatic. Yeah. 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 
You gotta, you gotta be sick. How does that feel? How does that feel to you? Like being able to do that, like knowing, you know, that your mom sacrificed for you and, you know, like she did all that she could. And now like, yo, here, you retired, you're in your twenties. You're able to like really watch your mom, like pay, pay her back, if you will. You know what I'm saying? It's a relief. Yeah. It's a relief. Because the thing about it, it's kind of like as entrepreneurs, a lot of times we're, we're, we're trying to figure things out. And yeah. I didn't think that I would be able to. There was a certain level of imposter syndrome because I was just like, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Mm. Like, because Morgan, like, we started off. I'll, I'll tell, I'm not going to tell you all where, where we're at now, but I started off sending $6,000 a month. Mm. Sending $6,000 a month. Wow. So where we're at now, it's, it's now that she's fully retired, right. it's a little bit more than that. <laughs> but at the beginning, I was just like, I don't know if I was going to do that. But you know what? It, it's, it's, it's crazy what happens when you just kind of let your belief in yourself take over. Because yeah. once I told myself, like, it's, there's no other choice. I got to make it happen or it's not going to happen. Yeah. It, it, it started to happen. Yeah. And now that's why I say like, it's kind of like a sense of relief. It's like, <sighs> she's okay. Yeah. She's okay. Like I got it. Cause yeah. I, I, I'm my family's plan A. Right. I'm my family's plan B. Right. Plan C, plan D through F. Yeah, yeah. It, there's no, I can't fumble. Right. And although that's a lot of pressure, it's also like it's 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 invigorating and it's empowering. Yeah. Because I know that, you know, God gives his strongest battles to his strongest soldiers. Yeah. And I would not be in the position to wield the kind of ability that I have if I was not capable of withholding it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I hold it like a mantle. I hold it like a trophy. I hold it like with a sense of pride, just yeah. like, like baby boy got us. And, and so, and so if I hear you correctly, anybody who after hearing this makes an excuse, um, they have to look deep into themselves. They have to ask themselves, why don't they think they're worthy? And they need to tell themselves that they are enough, that they are worthy, that they Des they they deserve you know uh, all the the abundance that that life that's reserved for them because that's the thing I don't think people understand that abundance is actually reserved for you like nobody can't take your like I can't take what what God got for you and you can't take what God got for me like like there's more than enough there's more than enough and that there's abundance reserve we just got to allow it. And stop fighting it, because that's my that's been my biggest issue. Where and that's why I don't. I you know what I say. You know what, you know, abundance is your birthright. You can have an abundance of abundance, or you can have an abundance of lack. That's your will. Wow. Right. So there might be people like I know people who enjoy drama, like they want to struggle, they want to live. You know, they want to. You know, they want to live a, a, a life of. Of 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 non peace, and that's your choice. But but for those who do want to live in abundance, to to um, you know enjoy what life has, all you gotta do is allow it. All you gotta do is say, you know what, I'm just allowing it. I'm not gonna fight this no more. Um, you have that a gave chills just now. <laughs> I, I, I give you chills just man, now, man. Um, you have a you have a you have a free master class yeah. that um you know you want people to attend which 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 again I appreciate you uh because uh, you know you you know you, in order to when you're blessed this is what I believe I believe when you're blessed it's an obligation to be a blessing 100% and so I you know I I wake up every day and I always ask how can I serve you is which I, I'm asking God I say God how can I serve you and God is always, uh, you know, pointing me towards people because God is within everybody. So you cannot serve God without serving people. Mm. Right. And I know you have a similar heart where you're blessed. And because of that blessing or being blessed, you aim to be a blessing to others and you're providing free. Like nobody has to pay for anything. I would I would even I would even change that to say, I think personally that I'm I think it's to an extent backwards. I think I have been blessed because I've been a blessing mm. to other people, or at least have tried to be. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, you know, God sees my heart and he's just like, all right, cool. Like, because, yeah. you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people with ill intent, things like that. But it's yeah. just like when you, when you genuinely want to see other people win, yeah. I think it comes back to you tenfold. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, like, there's so many people who, when I started in this game, they would not give out the information. Right. I give it out for free right. all the time. 
all the like everywhere yeah. and our business is still growing. Yeah. You know and 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 I and I'll I'll talk to that actually because um there's no coincidence that I'm starting to see a lot of the gatekeepers lose their position. <laughs> right? Like like literally um you know it's a marathon and I think that there was a lot of people up a lot of people trying to be gatekeepers. A lot of people thought they had these, they was on solid footing, um, and but they didn't have the right intentions. Um, and and I'm starting to notice, you know, and I don't, you know, I don't wish harm on nobody. I'm just a, an observer of the game. Uh, and I'm realizing that while there's certain people that are still rising and still getting to that next level, there are a group of people who were the gatekeepers at one time. But now, you know what I mean? Damn, homie. High school, you was the man. You was the man. You was the man, homie. What happened? And I was like, what happened? Damn, homie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but talk, talk about that master class. Like, talk about yeah, absolutely. You know, that master so, class. And, and this is something I want to really put on exclusively for your community. Yes. So everybody who comes through the Inside the Vault community, I want to make sure that they get tapped into our master class for free. It's at no cost. All they got to do is go to myfirsteventspace.com. They're going to be able to register. They're going to be able to lock in for free and join the master class. I'm dropping been easily well over two hours a game Facts. on finding the event space. Like, if you thought this was heat, like, yeah. I'm going and to I'm, And I was going to say, though, right, like, you literally, I mean, you talk fast, so y'all going to have to, re please <laughs> rewind this bad boys behind this. You're going to have to rewind this. Because, he, because, but, 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 and I was sitting here like, yo, this dude really just gave all the sauce away, but it's not all the sauce. There's more. Um, and so, like, I was, like, I was shocked. I was like, yo, this dude gave out everything. So I think even from this interview, like, y'all need to share this interview with everybody. Y'all need to tell, like, and, and run the plays, though. But then before you even run the play, matter of fact, yeah, tell them about the master class again. Yeah, absolutely. So all you got to do is tap into myfirsteventspace.com. I'm going to lock you in with a free seat at no cost. My man, Ash Cash, this is my guy. So I'm going to make sure everybody who comes through this community is going to get a seat at no cost. All you got to do is go to myfirsteventspace.com, and we're going to tap you in. Yo, what? so right now, 27-year-old, you know, Brian Waldron, billionaire B, um, multimillionaire, did I say that already? Multi-millionaire, 27 years old. <laughs> chill, chill, chill. The feds is watching, bro. Yo, too much money ain't enough money. I know the feds watch it. What money? Um, if you could go back to your 18-year-old self, knowing everything you know now, and you could go and talk to 18-year-old Brian, what advice are you giving him? Focus on one thing. Mm. 100% focus on one thing. Stop getting distracted. Yeah. Because distractions is what kills success. Ooh. A lot of times we're 18, 25, 30, and we're trying to figure things out. Stick with one thing and just make it happen. Because Ooh. there are people who make millions of dollars in real estate. There's people who make millions of dollars in toilet paper. Mm. It's the same millions Ooh. of dollars. So Say that. I would, <laughs> there's people who make millions of dollars in real estate, and there's people who make millions of dollars selling toilet paper. Mm. It's the same millions of dollars. It both hits the Chase account the same way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if I would, like, I, I did that and I was guilty of that when I was coming up in my, my young, you know, my manhood or whatever the case may be, just kind of switching, just kind of looking for, and whenever people ask me the question, is I hear, is that a good business? Yeah. Or I hear that's a good business. I know this is somebody who doesn't get it. Yeah. Because there's no such thing as a good business. There's mm. no such thing as a bad business. There's mm. people who make millions of dollars selling plants, selling TVs, selling microphones. Yeah. It's, are you a good business person? Mm. And are you willing to do what it takes every single day in, day out mm. to be consistent to the grind, dedicated? It to the grind to see this throughout. Mm. So if I was going back to my 18-year-old self, I'd just be like, yo, stick to the plan. Mm. That's it. And 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 stick it to the plan. Um, at what point do you decide whether that plan is working or do you just stick to it regardless? Like, do you say, all right, event spaces and that's it, and I'm gonna go hard. And even if 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 things are going up, down, whatever, I'm gonna focus on that. Like, at what point do you retreat? At what point do you say, you know what, nah, I don't think this is gonna work? So I would say retreat when it's definitely something that's just not fulfilling to you. Yeah. If you feel like it's something that like you get into it and it's just genuinely conflicting with your inner air energy and aura, yeah. then absolutely get out. But I would just say the timeline is three months. Mm. 
the timeline is three months. Give yourself three months to do something. If you're, you want to go into photography or whatever, give it three months. Give it yeah. a solid three months. Grind it out for 90 days. Put out a piece of content every single day, right? Yeah. And see if this is something that you like. If it's not something that you like, and then, of course, while you're going through the phases, make sure you're collecting data. Yeah. Like, all right, cool. Is this, am I getting clients? Am I, you know, everything's traffic and conversions. Am I getting clients? Am I getting business? Am I getting whatever the case may be? And just measure that for three months. And if you feel at a certain point that you're unfulfilled and this is not something that you, 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 you want to get into, because I'll be very, very transparent. There were times when I wanted to quit my event space business, mm. when I had ACs blow out in the middle of summer, mm. when I had sewer back up three inches before an event, mm. there are plenty of times I wanted to give them just be like, yo, screw this, but I'm glad I never did Yeah, because business is inherently not easy. Yeah. But it's easy for those who put in the work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I say like, oh, yeah, running events is easy. It's not necessarily because it's easy. It's because it's easy because I've done the work. Yeah. And those who don't do the work are going to make everything difficult. Yeah. There are a lot of businesses that are very, very simple. There are a lot of businesses that are very, very complex. Mm -hmm. But the people who always make it more difficult and don't make money are the ones that always make it complex. Mm. So give it three months. If it's unfulfilling to you, get out of it. But just give it, give it some time and just stick to the plan. Oh, I love work. it. And then, and then, you know, my, my, my last question um, or questions with, with being a young multimillionaire, um, what, what has been the most extravagant thing that you've done with money so far? Probably very lavish vacations. Yeah. I'm not a very materialistic person. Yeah. I'm in the interview in a $20 flannel and Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just don't really, but like I used to be like that in yeah. high school, like, oh yeah, Supreme, this, like, and all yeah. this like, extra stuff. And now I just, I believe in, you know, we're never going to be this young again. Mm. So I, I would rather pay for, you know, a $300 steak or a $20,000 vacation mm. and build solid memories than, yeah. you know, a piece of clothing or whatnot. That's just not going to matter a year from now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, H&MT is $6. Well, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So in terms of lab, when you, when you want to get drippy, you get drippy though. I can yeah, for yeah, sure. hundred yeah, percent, hundred percent. But for nine times out of 10, like I'm at the crib in a regular, right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, in terms of extra, honestly, the most extravagant to me is probably the property that I purchased. Mm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's something that's just going, you know, it's going to stay there and it's going to live for me forever and ever. Yeah, yeah. But definitely vacations. Like yeah. I, I've been, I've been kicking up and travel a little bit like that. I went to Dubai a couple of weeks ago, uh, Turks and Caicos, Costa Rica, Jamaica. I'm being in Italy in a couple months. Mm. So I'm definitely, those are memories that don't go anywhere. Nice, nice. And then besides uh, retiring your mom, what would you say the next most impactful thing you've done with money has been that i've done or that i want to do uh i take both abundance is my birthright so I want <laughs> both. <laughs> that i've done so far is been able to empower people to make upwards of fifty thousand dollars in a month yeah. and like see the direct correlation like this is somebody who used to work at a job and now this is somebody who travels every other month yeah this is somebody who didn't know what school they were sending their kids to to now sending their kids to private school yeah. like that's when people send me DMs every single day, I have an album with like literally over 500 testimonials. When people send me these messages like, yo, because of you, I was able to get my space. Because of you, I make $10,000 a month now. Because of you, I left my job. It's just like, like I said, I, I feel like I'm blessed now because I've been yeah. a blessing. Like I took the time to help other people along the way. Because it's one thing to run up the ladder. It's another thing to reach your hand down and help mm. other people get up too. Mm. And I feel like that's what I really pride myself on because I remember how it was yeah. when nobody would help, yeah. when everybody's just gatekeeping, right? Yeah. And then going forward, what my next thing would be is to just have a student in every state in the country just running the play. Wow. And just partnering with one person in every single state in the country because wow. there's money all over the country and even international. I've got mentees in Toronto, mm. Montreal, Canada, Australia, uh, London running the play. So we can really just bring this thing global. Yeah. So just empowering more and more families to just be able to be more wealthy. All right, y'all. Billionaire B just crushed every single excuse you ever had in your life about living in true abundance. Make sure y'all tap in with his free master class where he's going to teach you everything you need to know. There's no longer uh, an excuse. There's no longer a reason. Unless you are okay with where you are, you need to tap into my guy. Uh, if you, you know, if people want to follow you, they want to connect with you, where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. All you got to do is go to Instagram at Billionaire B. Um, yeah, I got that IG name now. That's it. <laughs> Billy, that's me. All right, y'all. We are closing out the vault. Another awesome episode of Inside the Vault, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Make sure you follow us. Go to our website, InsideTheVaultShow.com. Follow us on all social media platforms at 
inside the vault. Me, I am Ash Cash. Make sure you visit me, IamAshCash.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. Also, make sure y'all tap into the Abundance Community. Every episode, we have behind the scenes, right? We have behind the scenes footage uh, of, you know, exclusive things that only our insiders can see. So make sure y'all tap into the Abundance Community. Go to AbundanceCommunity.org and join us where abundance is your birthright. We help you live in, in abundance. All right, y'all, I'm out of here. We will see you next time, same time, same place, in God's will for another awesome episode. I'll see y'all next time, y'all. Peace!